my name is Adam Besson from Mary Smart. This is your super duper radio station. It's a good thing to give that. Women live from Reynoldsburg, Ohio. The program is Echoes of Grace. Give him the Isaac Pinto, the CEO of Holy Health Radio, is the one controlling the machines for us. It's going to be a wonderful, wonderful program tonight. I'm so excited. Mr. Chris, I do tell you, uh, is the producer of this wonderful program, as said by Anida Inti. It's going to be such a wonderful program. Tell somebody to join us live. Invite a friend, it's going to be such, such a fantastic evening. I'm going to give you the motivation for the week before we go into all the subject matter expert has for us tonight. The motivation for tonight is taken from Romans chapter 8 verse 1. The Bible says, there's therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. You see, the bottom of so many mistakes, so many sicknesses is condemnation. People have given up because they feel condemned before God. Doctors will tell you that there are so many sicknesses which can be traced to the fact that people are feeling guilty. People are committing suicide. So many things are going on because the root cause is condemnation. So the great apostle Paul writes, that the only place that we can find guilt free is when we come before the cross. It was there for now. And it's taken now. It's not something that is going to happen in future. So as a Christian, one thing that you should know, one thing that you should walk in is the fact that God has, Jesus has taken your guilt away. You are free from condemnation. And for that matter, you need to live a life worthy of emulation. You need to live a life that is going to go to honor God. Tonight, we are so blessed. We are blessed to have a wonderful, wonderful woman of God with us. She has taken time off her heavy schedule to be with us here. And tonight, we are going to talk about Mary Magdalene. Ladies and gentlemen, I introduce to you Mrs. Sylvia Ai. Ah. Coming to talk about Mary Magdalene. Ah. Madam, welcome. Ah. Wow, we are privileged to have you here. Yeah, ah. Wow, that's live on Holy Health Radio, your super duper radio station, your champion station, the coach of the airwaves. Ah. Welcome. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself before we go into our, our study today? Tonight? Sure. Mm -hmm. um, my name is Sylvia Ayi, uh, Mrs. Sylvia Ayi. I married with a wonderful man of God, or to a wonderful man of God. I have two kids. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a member of the Great Church of Pentecost and uh, the Great Voices of Glory. Wow. wow. <laughs> I'm very proud to be a part of these groups. Um, I, uh, that's a little bit about, about myself, myself. Yes. Okay, 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 wow, wow. And tonight, we are going to talk about somewhat a, a, a personality that people hardly talk about. Yes. A personality who has played a very key role in the church, but some way, somehow, she's been neglected. Right. Can you just give us a summary who Mary Magdalene is? Well, when the topic came forward to discuss, mm -hmm. I... I doubted myself a little because <laughs> <laughs> her name has just been mentioned two or three times in the Bible. But doing the little research about <laughs> her shows how vast um, or how significant she was in, right. the, in, the, in the life of Jesus Christ. She is an amazing woman. When I think of Mary Magdalene, I think of a devoted woman mm. and her title uh, being the Apostle of the Apostles because uh, she was the first to see Christ, and she was given an assignment to go tell the world that Christ has risen. Wow. Yes, so wow. she was an evangelist. She, uh, she, she, Christ used her immensely, and she was able to, you know, uh, do a lot for God because she availed herself. She was a strong, devoted Christian that God used, and she also allowed herself to be used by God. Wow, 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 yeah. wow. So... Uh, Mary Madeline, uh, can you say, uh, is she the same person who is 
uh, referred to as the woman of the seven demons. Can you talk about yes. that a little bit? Uh, so she was, um, Jesus met her when she, um, when she was met by Jesus, mm -hmm. she had that issue. She had, she's been tagged or stigmatized that way, that she had demons. And some researchers believe that the demons is not necessarily demons, but it could be diseases, because at the time there was no name or there were no names for those diseases. So it could be schizophrenia, it could be depression, it could be anything. Mm -hmm. So they were, they because they didn't have any name for it, they just tagged them as demons. So, um, yes, Jesus gave her that freedom by casting it out. I read somewhere that the reason why she was devoted was only because Jesus didn't take it all out, out at once. Mm -hmm. Yes, because uh, because she wanted to be healed, she kept coming to the feet of Jesus. That's why she was devoted. That is what led her to be devoted. But uh, we want to believe what the Bible tells us mm -hmm. that when you read, when you read um, the Bible, it tells us that he was able to deliver her from the demons. And I believe that he did that all at once. And once he did that, he was set, she was set free. She was liberated. She was confident to be able to do what God has called her to do. Mm -hmm. She was financing the ministry of Jesus. Really? Yes. She, she, you could tell that she was like the meko leader <laughs> of the followers of Jesus. Wow. Yes. So uh, she was indeed uh, relieved from whatever was tormenting her at the time, which gave her liberty to do more for God or for Jesus as a follower of Christ. Okay, so can you tie the fact that she was delivered of those demons to the, uh, the, the, her dedication to God? Yes, because you want to remember where you came from. Mm -hmm. She only knew how uh, difficult it was at the time that she was in that situation. If you're in a situation where nobody could help you, no man could, there were a lot of people or there were probably a lot of preachers who could have saved her, but only Jesus was the one who was able to save her. Mm -hmm. So if I were Mary Magdalene, of course, I would be devoted. Wherever Jesus is, I'm mm -hmm. going to make sure I am there. Just in case, you know, I might get into that situation again. I don't want to be in that situation again. Mm -hmm. So I will always want to be under his feet or, you know, in his arms, making sure that I, I am delivered constantly or I'm set free wow, and liberated. Wow eternally so it was like she was afraid in my comeback uh, to me that's what i would i would believe or she was very grateful she knew what god has done for her she wasn't ready to go back to the world mm. she was following jesus with her whole heart very dedicated she she wasn't she was sold out for christ no matter what anybody said because christ was also tagged at some point as a criminal as a rebel leader, right. if it was Mary, or if we were Mary Magdalene, we would have said, "Okay, I don't want you know to be killed one day because that would have that that is obviously in, you know in the pipeline." Right. But she didn't care what people you know would say about her. She didn't care how Jesus was tagged. She knew what Jesus had done for her, and she was sold out for him. Wow, there was this thing about women where once they commit themselves to something, they go all out for it. I mean, what what can you say about that? I mean, I, I, how, how can we emulate that as uh, as men? Um, I think Christ or God created women that way. Mm -hmm. uh, if imagine if we are all hardened hearted, or uh -huh. maybe we are all strong, right. like or we all have the hearts of men, men. how would <laughs> life be? So God, in His own wisdom, I believe, created women that way. We are more devoted than men are in mm -hmm. certain ways. There are some times that you find men. Uh, more devoted than women. Mm -hmm. you Like some men of God, I would say. There are some men of God who are more devoted than some Christian women. So um, it's a stereotype. Mm -hmm. Generally, women are more devoted than men. Right. And your question as to how men can emulate, mm -hmm. uh, you would have to desire to be to, to, you would have to desire to be that way. Right. To be devoted. Right. You can take it to the Lord in prayer. If I know somebody who wants to be devoted, I'll pray about it. I can't push the person, mm -hmm. you know, to, or force the person to be devoted in the things of God. I can only pray for the person and live an exemplary life mm -hmm. for the person to also follow. Wow, yeah. wow, wow. One controversial thing about this woman, I don't know how that came about, is the fact that people talked about uh, that she was in a relationship with Jesus. What can you say about that? Uh, I would say we want to believe in what the Bible say and mm -hmm. what it says only, period. Uh, most people, atheists, historians, who most of them are not Christians, 
will try to draw people away from the Bible or mm-hmm. what the Bible, the, what the living Bible says. Mm-hmm. So um, in many cases, they'll try to say all kinds of things and get you to reason with them and see some logic in whatever they are, you know, whatever um, yeah, they, they bring up. Mm-hmm. Yes, whatever theory, you know, they might bring up. They want to put some logic in it and make sure you understand so that if you're a scientist and you don't believe in God, you know, the way scientists think, they, they also think in that way. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. if you're not a believer and you're lured to that, you might want to uh, draw away from what the Bible says and follow them. They believe that Jesus Christ had an intimate relationship with uh, Mary Magdalene. Mm-hmm. Why? Because when Jesus died mm-hmm. and he was uh, taken off the cross, he was put in the uh, tomb, mm-hmm. which was also called a sepulcher, I believe. Mm-hmm. Right. Um you know, then later on, Mary and Mary Magdalene and Jesus' sister all went um, after, a num- after, I believe, three days mm-hmm. to uh, check if it was still there and prepare the body for burial. If you are not intimate with somebody like that, you would not be a part of the people who, are, who have personal relationship with him, right. like his mom and his sister. The, so that was their uh, logic behind the whole thing. If, if you are not intimate with a man... If, you know, he's dead and gone, why would you be interested in going to bathe him? Mm -hmm. You know, that's not your job. So that that was their whole... But I believe Mary Magdalene was a part of this whole uh, process because of her, again, devotion or how devoted she was with God. She loved Jesus Christ with all her heart. She loved Jesus Christ with all her heart. And she always sought for him. Because when you read the Bible again, it tells you that... um, in the, uh, let me see if I can find that passage mm-hmm. where uh, in, the, in the dark, it was still, while it was still dark, it tells us that Mary Magdalene went searching for him. Um, when you read John 6, 20, it says, Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. Why wasn't it Mary, Jesus' mother, mm-hmm. or even Peter? Mm-hmm. Or one of the male apostles, okay. or I mean disciples. Why wasn't it anybody but Mary? Yes, she she had a special love for God. Okay. I mean, or for Christ. Mm-hmm. She she even though he was dead and gone, nobody will you know you will probably feel like okay he's dead and gone. Let me move on with my life. But she was dead till the end. Even till when he was dead, she wanted to be sure that everything concerning him was all done appropriately. So she made sure she went to the tomb Mm -hmm. at that time of the night, you know, at that time of the day, Mm -hmm. while everybody was asleep, she was on a charge, going to search for him, make sure that he was there, everything, he was safe, because it wasn't easy with the soldiers and everything. So she sought after God, or she sought after Christ, and... Indeed, in the end, Christ revealed himself to her also. Wow. So that is, that, is, that is the little I would say about that because f- I wouldn't do that if mm-hmm. I didn't love somebody that way. So only somebody you love that way would be able to do that for you. Wow. So you're saying they were not in a relationship? I don't believe so. She just had a, a peculiar love for Jesus Christ and it affected all other things that she did when it comes to Jesus Christ. But why do people say they were in a... Well, I mean, where did the rumor come from? That Jesus Christ and Mary Magdalene or something? <laughs> I, believe, I believe those uh, those people, uh, maybe atheists. Uh-huh. Yeah, they just... They have been sent by the devil, you know, to draw people's minds from even the risen Christ, yeah. that indeed Christ even rose. How can somebody who was in a, you know, such a relationship with uh, a woman, how can you say that she's, he's so holy? How can you say that um, uh, he, he rose, he, he came in flesh, and then he's now this, in the spirit? Mm-hmm. Like, they just want to try, uh-huh. you know, to throw dark on everything that Christ did to make him look insignificant. Or to make what God sent him to come and do look like it never happened. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. they take the spirit or the relevance of Christ's death out of the whole scenario. And it makes it look like wow. he never did anything or it's it's okay or it's ordinary. You know, and some even said 
uh, Jesus Christ had two kids with Mary Magdalene. <laughs> Some said he kissed her on the lips, and the disciples didn't like that. You know, <laughs> I was not there, so I don't know. But I want to believe in what the Living Bible says oh, about funny. Jesus Christ and Mary Magdalene. I believe I don't believe any of that happened, and if it did, it was all for the love of Christ. Wow! 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 Uh, people, you are watching Holy Hell's Radio. Tonight we have Mrs. Sylvia Ayi and we are talking about Mary Magdalene. Please uh, invite somebody to join us and please share the video for us. Kumasi Nyami says, Mary of Magdala was, wasn't a prostitute, as most people believe, but rather one of the people who founded the Christian movement. And then another one says, in the second temple, Judaism, Juda Judaism uh, without a wife wasn't, okay, a person practicing, trying to say, okay, what is he saying? A person practicing Judaism without a wife wasn't regarded as a rabbi. Okay, that's why some people believe they were in a relationship. Do you have anything to say about that? That anybody who was called a rabbi must have had a wife. So they think probably Jesus Christ either had her as a wife or a girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I will still stand with my point that. Uh, uh, the Bible did not talk about that fact, so uh -huh. I don't even want to think about it. And then there was the, even the resurrection when Jesus came yes. out from the tomb. Yes. Can you talk about that a little bit also? Uh, um, yes. That, is, is, that is where Mary Magdalene is very paramount here. I respect her so much for that. And I think through that, she, uh, she, she was able to... I mean, women got respected, period. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. For the risen Christ to be seen by a woman, a woman and not right. a man, right. not a preacher, a king, mm -hmm. but a woman who has been stigmatized, you know, for so long and has been redeemed. For the risen Christ to, to be seen by this woman, first of all, brings a lot of respect to women right. worldwide. Women yes. were elevated. Yes, right away. yes, uh -huh. absolutely. So I would say that why, why would Jesus leave everything? Because when he rose, he could have just you know, appeared to a gathering of people, right. you know, or maybe to his uh, disciples mm -hmm. who were all men mm -hmm. and just say, hey, it's me, I'm alive. You know, tell my, tell, go spread the gospel. Tell everybody that, yes, I died and on the third day I rose again. But no, he deemed it in, uh, very important mm -hmm. to reveal himself to Mary. Why? Because Mary at the time was searching for him. If you search for Christ, you will see him. That is that is the significance of that whole uh, uh, story for me. Mm -hmm. Yes, if you search for him diligently, you will see him. And I, I want to thank my pastor, Pastor Nana Yeboa. He's been talking about morning devotion for about two, right. three weeks now. And this comes into play. If you see God early in the morning, like she did in the dark, while it was still dark, mm -hmm. you wake up early in the morning, dawn, at dawn, trying to search for Jesus, mm -hmm. trying to know him, trying to have an intimate relationship with him. You will see him, and he will give you an assignment like he gave Mary Magdalene. Mm -hmm. Once Mary Magdalene saw him, he said, it is me. I'm alive. I'm, I have risen. I did not die or stay dead. Mm -hmm. I'm giving you an assignment to go and tell the world that I have risen. Wow. That made her, that appointed her as the apostle of the apostles. So it's all about your heart. Correct. So once your heart is desiring, he will reveal himself. Exactly. Exactly. Because he could, of all the people, of all the disciples he had, of all the people who were following him, he chose to reveal himself to Mary Magdalene. Wow. Because at the time, he, she was looking for him. She was in search for him. Wow. She lived every bit of her life yes. for Jesus. Yes. At that time of the night or that time of the morning, she could have been doing something. Mm -hmm. She had stuff to do. She left everything. She could have been, She could have said, okay, I'm even scared. Mm -hmm. What if, if I go to the tomb, there are soldiers there to right. kill me? She, did, she was fearless. And most people didn't even want to affiliate exactly. with Jesus. Exactly. Peter I, denied uh -huh. him. A lot of his disciples denied him. They didn't, they didn't want to do anything, have anything to do with him. But this, she was all sold out, like I said earlier. The, the, the love that Mary Magdalene had for Jesus probably supersedes what Mary, you know, the mother, the of, the Jesus mother of Jesus, right. had, to my opinion. Right. I of could course. be wrong. No, no, you're not wrong. Yes. Absolutely. So, because, the, I mean, on the Sunday morning, did Mary, the mother of Jesus, go to anoint no. the body? They, they thought Jesus was dead. Right. And like human beings, when we see that something, somebody is dead, the person feels like, let me just give up. Exactly. Him. If it's dead, it's dead. It's hopeless. Wow. 
It's hopeless. Such dedication. Yes. Devoted woman she was. Devoted. Was she a prostitute? Um, the Bible highlighted a little bit on that, you know, on that. When Jesus met her, all I remember reading was she was possessed with demons. The life before uh, that, I, I don't really... Mm -hmm think it's important right. or even if she was a prostitute she was redeemed redeemed she was redeemed so the lesson here is it doesn't matter what you are it doesn't matter your past if god chooses to use you if you go before him surrender all to him he can give you a second chance liberate you set you free and live a more significant life and impact your generation I mean, the, the feat, the fact that the achievement, the fact that she was the first person to see Jesus, that is something. Uh, oh, I'm, I, I don't doubt that. I don't so doubt that. That is a big post. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. So what do you think about women being preachers and uh, being pastors and stuff like that? If Jesus himself, there is already Christ, he revealed himself to uh, Mary Magdalene. Right. So um, in my research, I realized that we have we see the works of peter mm -hmm. we see the works of john we see the works of other uh disciples and stuff like that but when it comes to women we never heard of anything like that but mm -hmm. they did works right they also wrote stuff about christ whatever because i read somewhere also that just like uh we have the memako and the Merko leader mm -hmm. peter and mary respectively were leaders of the the men and women group in the ministry of Jesus Christ oh, okay. when he was on earth, yes. Wow. So obviously she did some work too, but nobody, you know, talked about it. In those days, women were seen as insignificant. Whatever we talked about was didn't have any basis. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever we talked about was not important. Women were not regarded hmm. in those days. So everything, whatever she did, no matter how important it was, it was not, it had no basis. It was not a reliable, they felt it wasn't reliable or necessary to talk yeah. about or even write about. Right. So um, I don't want to deviate from your question, but uh, she, she also did some good works, just like Peter and the other disciples did, just that, unfortunately, it wasn't talked about. Hmm. Yeah. Did I answer the question? Oh, yeah, you did. But so <laughs> it's possible she wrote some uh, Exactly. Gospels, she did. It was I'm covered sure up. she did. I would have yes. loved to re read it. Oh, me too. The dedication and the kind of love. Wow. Absolutely. Wow. Wow. I would have loved to see what not. I'm not sure it's just Mary Magdalene, but several women might have also done some good works, you know, as, be, you know, being followers of Christ, but it never got recorded or um, revealed for the world to, you know, sharing. Hmm. Yeah. So on that, on that fateful day when she was going to see Jesus, can you, can you talk about how, I mean, that feeling or how, what you can envisage, what was going on in her mind? Uh, you mean at the crucifixion? No, at the when, cross? no, on the morning when she was going to. Um, I, I feel Mary Magdalene was hopeful that she was she would find the body there, mm -hmm. and then you know prepare it for burial like you know it's supposed to be done, and at the same time she was not in expectant of seeing Christ rise. Right. So the reason why I say that is because of her reaction when uh, she met, she went there, she didn't see the body. She saw two angels sitting at the head mm. and bottom of the, the tomb, you okay. know, or where Jesus laid. Mm -hmm. And they asked her, she looked down and then they asked her, you know, woman, what are you looking for? Who are you looking for? Why are you here? And then she said she was looking for, you know, the body of Christ. And then, you know, Jesus Christ appeared, I believe, behind her. And she... Um, she was weeping mm -hmm. because what she was expecting to see, she couldn't, she didn't see it. So Jesus Christ called her. No, I, I believe she saw Jesus Christ right. behind her. And uh -huh. then she was like, are you the gardener? Mm -hmm. If you are the gardener, where did you take the Je body the of body Christ to uh -huh, show me right. so that, you know, I could go and right. prepare him for burial. And then Jesus called her name. If indeed he was the gardener, then of course he doesn't know her. So he wouldn't have called her mm -hmm. by name. Right. So immediately Jesus called her by name. He knew she knew, you know, it could be somebody she knew. And then he I'm sure she recognized the voice. And so she said, Rabbi, you know, mm -hmm. is that you? Like, you know, right. of course, if you are the gardener, you're a stranger to me, you wouldn't know mm -hmm. me. But immediately Jesus mentioned, you know, Mary. Then she recognized the, the voice, voice and she said, Oh, 
rabbi. And th we can also use that point to say that all those saying that, okay, they had an intimate relationship, you know, at the time when Jesus appeared to her mm -hmm. and called her by her name, she could have said, oh, middle, uh -huh. or, oh, my love, my or love. something. Uh -huh. But she gave him the due respect and, you know, uh, accorded him with the name uh -huh. rabbi. So if Jesus was her boyfriend, yes. as is being alleged. yes. I mean, it would have been a spontaneous of reaction. Of course. She wouldn't say, oh, master. Exactly. Uh -huh. It would exactly. have been, oh, Jesus. Yes. Or, oh, my love. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I mean, some of this stuff are funny. <laughs> okay, so why couldn't, she recognize, why couldn't she recognize Jesus? I believe she was not expecting to see him, you know, rise. That's, I've thought about it several times. I'm like, if he told you he was going to rise on the third day, mm -hmm. If you, you know, you see, and you see him, or you, I don't know how Jesus looked, or maybe he looked different. Glorified. Yes. Mm -hmm. he, he probably didn't come in person. Right. So he looked like an angel to her. So um, it was a shock because this is somebody you know in flesh. Right. And, mm -hmm. and now, now you, you're no longer seeing him in flesh. It was, you'll be surprised. Mm -hmm. All too good to be true. Yes. Yes, or she, if it was me, I'd probably be scared because I'd say, oh, is that a ghost, uh -huh. you know? But no, she was excited to see him. But the reason why she was not so, uh, the reaction was a little bit awkward was because she was in shock. Mm -hmm. Yes, because there's no more Jesus in flesh, but Jesus in the spirit. So it's on a different level yes. now. Yes. Wow, wow, yes. wow. So she she wasn't expecting, maybe if she would see him again, she was expecting to see him in flesh and not in the other way. So um, that could have been why she, she, she didn't recognize him and said, you know, are you the gardener? Mm -hmm. You know? And yet when he went, Peter and the other disciples didn't believe it. Right. Once again, it boils down to how they, they treated women. Right, right. So... Uh-huh. Um, so when Mary told them that Christ was risen, they didn't believe. So Christ himself had to come, you know, show himself to them. Mm -hmm. And even still, they didn't believe. Doubting Thomas had to put his hand, you know, in the wounds in to, the wound. to make sure that, <laughs> yes, it's indeed you. So, you know, that also comes down to say that women are easily, you know, we are gullible. We easily believe things. And for that matter, in those days, whatever a woman said was not It was real. not even admissible in the law. Yes. Exactly. So whatever she saw, they discounted mm -hmm. it. Wow. And she yeah. still stood on her ground. Exactly. So what can we learn as Christians from Mary Magdalene? A lot. The, lessons, uh -huh. the lessons are many. Can you give us... I'm going to give you some a few <laughs> minutes to run us through. Okay. Uh, glad we do that. Uh -huh. uh, my first point is that um, the lesson we can learn from Mary Magdalene is as women... Um, never doubt the love that God has for us as women, no matter how men treat us, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, some, some, in some churches, women are not even allowed to preach. Um, women are just shoved to the corner somewhere. Mm -hmm. God loves women a lot. In, in most churches, on the, what people don't even get is that there is, the church thrives on the efforts of women. We are the wheels of the church. Really? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes, we are the wheels of the church. <laughs> and okay. in Jesus' ministry, you could tell that he used women immensely in everything he did. There were male followers and there were, there were female followers. If it wasn't so, he would have just pushed women to the side mm -hmm. and just had, you know, all male followers. Right, right. But he knew the importance of women. And so he involved them. He did not, you know, shove them to the side or he did not leave them out. They were, we are all followers. You're all going to be my followers. You're also important as equally as important as my male followers. Mm. So Jesus loved us even from back in the day. As a woman, just know that you are special and God special. loves you. God loves you. God loves you. God, God loves you. So um, we want to be as Mary Magdalene and be spreading the gospel just like she did regardless of uh, what people say about us or how you feel, what your past is. Right. So even in those days, she was so determined because those days, the adversity for women against women was so high. Exactly. And she stood right. Yes, exactly. Exactly. And somewhere I also read that um, she financed the ministry of God immensely. I don't know what whether, whether monetary, Baal means monetary terms, but mm -hmm. of course, doing the work of God, you would have to feed people 
you know, uh, clothes, make sure everybody has the needs and wants, you know, it, it's money. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so she was one of the financiers of Jesus Christ's ministry wow. um, at the time. Um, yeah. And she, she's, she's just an amazing person. Very important. And it's unfortunate we don't talk about her much as we do for the um, other disciples. And also, uh, the one, of, one other lesson is that uh, Jesus Christ, through Mary Magdalene, I could tell that she had her peace of mind. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ delivered her so that she had peace of mind to do his work for her. Right. If you follow Jesus, you will enjoy peace of mind. So many things you would not be fighting for or you would not be battling with. Because you walk with what the, the Messiah, mm -hmm. you walk with somebody who is all knowing. That is a lesson that I've learned from 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 Mary Magdalene. Yeah, and then um, another lesson would be she was persistent. There's a reward in being, being persistent. persistent. Right. Yes, she she was rewarded, and I don't think I'm sure she was even being jealous by some of the male, mm -hmm. male disciples. And but, I mean, I've been at the cross because these Roman soldiers they were not joking. No, and the men knew exactly what the Roman soldiers could do. Correct. So they stayed away. Uh, yes, and that that I also want to touch on a little bit. Not it wasn't the men stayed away not because they were cowards, mm -hmm. but Jesus was tagged as a rebel leader in those days, mm -hmm. a criminal. That was why he was even crucified with two other criminals. Mm -hmm. He was tagged badly. And so if men, the women, uh, I believe, were allowed to the crucifixion grounds because women were deemed as weak, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's unlikely for a woman to create or, you know, protest. Okay. okay. Unlike a man would do or men would do. So the men feared for their lives mm -hmm. because they knew if they got there, something could happen, okay. you know, okay. and they could, they could even indeed, as, like the soldiers thought, they could indeed protest what they were doing to Jesus Christ mm -hmm. because this is my master and this is what you're doing to him. I would love to fight you for doing that to him. So they, knew, they already, you know, thought ahead of the, themselves that, hey, if I'm not careful and I go there, I, it's very likely I'll be killed. For the, the soldiers who fear, you know, the followers of Christ mm -hmm. who were males, you know, come in there. When Peter had cut somebody's ear. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That, would, that alone would uh -huh. send some signal uh, Exactly, them. exactly. So I, I don't believe the men did not okay. go there because they were cowards, okay. but because they feared for their lives. Okay, wow. And I'm sure some women would also fear for their lives too, but again, with Mary Magdalene being so fearless, she still was able to go and watch whatever was going on. And I'm sure Jesus Christ felt content in himself that, oh, upon all that they are doing for me, I have these women, including his own mom, who were there, who, you know, who were there for me in this difficult time. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it gave him some form of, you know, contentment or peace or comfort to see them because you can't imagine being going through this and you had nobody, you know, right, around, right. around you. So that, that was also um, very important in the and life that, that of Christ. That must have been heartbreaking for Mary Magdalene. Seeing Jesus on the cross yes. and all the things that Jesus was going through, right? And then, I mean, for most, uh, for most of the, of the other women who were there, they were somehow related to Jesus, right? Like the other Mary was also uh, the sister of Mary, correct? The, the mother of Jesus, mm -hmm. and then Mary Magdalene was not related to Jesus no, in any way. By blood, but pure no. love, yes. Just drove her mm -hmm. to the cross. Wow. Yeah. Wow. We have a lot to do. Yeah. We have a lot to do. <laughs> and what are some, some of the other lessons? Wow. Uh, serving God is never in vain. If you serve God diligently, you will be you rewarded. Wow. wow. Most definitely. Be sure you can be sure about that. That's a guarantee. And it doesn't matter if whatever if whatever you're doing for Christ is even behind the scenes and nobody sees it. God sees it. God sees, God it. sees your sacrifices. Right. Yes. It, you must not always be in the front row or you must not always be the one to hold the mic. If you're mm. the one that cleans and nobody sees it, God sees it, he will reward you. It's not in vain. A good measure. Yes. Wow. That's, yes. That's powerful. Yes. So uh, Mary, Mary is a very uh, great topic, or I mm. mean a great character that we can all learn from mm. um, moving forward in our lives. Wow. And then, I mean, one, one thing about her is her faithfulness. Mm -hmm. You know, most people can be friends with somebody. The moment the person dies, you don't even care about their family. Exactly. Because okay. they know you are, you are dead. So, you are, But this lady knew Jesus was dead. Mm -hmm. And for me, judging from the way he was badly beaten and hanging on the cross, they knew that it was over. Yes. 
I mean, I, I, ancient history talks about the fact that Mary, Mary, the mother of Jesus, arrived at the scene and asked that it, which of them, which of these thieves, the people hanging on the cross, which of them is my son? <laughs> oh, yeah. So you could see that they thought that uh, Jesus Christ was not going to come back. But right. this woman still wanted to do something for Christ. Right. And it talks about being faithful. Right. And I'm sure people were gossiping about her and talking about her. What, who do you think you are? What are you doing? Yeah. He's dead and gone. She didn't care what people would say. And in the church, it happens all the time. Mm -hmm. No matter what you try to do to make God's business go on well, somebody's going to sit somewhere and talk about you. Right, right, somebody's right. going to sit somewhere and gossip about it. And if you let that bother you, like Mary uh, Magdalene did not let that bother her. She was focused and she knew what she was doing. If you if you act like that, you will get to a you know an expected end. Hmm. Don't worry about what people think about you. So far as you know, God has given you an assignment in your heart, mm -hmm. and you are doing it. You're doing it diligently. He will reward you like He did for Mary Magdalene. Wow! Wow! Yes. I've learned a lot. Yes, I have too. Uh, wow! Wow! <laughs> so I, I mean, these character traits are lacking, but like you were talking about, they are lacking badly in the church whereby people are not dedicated mm -hmm. small opposition yes. people just give up oh yes um they are a little bit disappointed and they feel like let me just give up mm -hmm. but this woman was just focused amazing and, woman. and I, I can imagine that uh, I, I mean this thing about girlfriend and boyfriend and accusation did not start in our day yes probably they were even <laughs> accusing her in those yes days. yes and yet uh, she, she, was, didn't she didn't care because she knew it wasn't true yeah she knew it wasn't true and i i just uh, sometimes when i you know, do a little bit of research and I see all these things. I just scroll past it because it's not true. So why do you waste your time and bring all these, waste your time, do a whole documentary about how Jesus was in a blood relationship with Mary. They had two kids. Nobody uh, talked about it. It was, they deliberately hid it from the <laughs> public because it will degrade Jesus or disgrace Jesus. So they, it's not true. So I don't know who they are trying to, you know, impress or please, but... I, I just I want to encourage everybody to just go by what the Living Bible says. Wow. That's wow, where the wow, truth is. Wow. This is Ai. I mean, <laughs> it's been so wonderful. Is there anything else you wanted to add before? Uh, I think, well, I believe we've digested it all. There's, uh, there's still more that um, I would love to talk about, but time will not permit us. Oh, so, no, you can talk about it. We can, uh, we can talk about it. Yes, if you want to add anything more. Yeah, I just want to mm -hmm. just conclude by saying that God is a God of second chance. Mm -hmm. Mary Magdalene was given a second chance. Um, she could have stayed where she was with the demons bothering her mm -hmm. and say, okay, I don't believe that I could even be healed and just stayed in you know her comfort zone, mm -hmm. even though it bothered her. Right. But she chose to step forward. She chose to be healed. She made a choice. Life is all about you. I mean, what the choices that you make. Right. Are you choosing to live in your sin or whatever is bothering you? You are choosing to seek help through Jesus Christ who can redeem you and then help you enjoy a meaningful life, help you to impact your generation. So she made the right choice, and in the end, the victory was hers. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So that wow. is what I would like to So it to doesn't matter your with. past. No. Whether you have seven demons, it doesn't matter. No. Whether people are saying you were a prostitute, it doesn't matter. No. no. Jesus can still make something out yes. of you. And out of all the people who have left, she's the first person who saw the resurrected Christ. Right. Which is no mean an achievement. Mm -hmm. I mean, Apostle Paul and all those people, we talk about them, but this woman has, has one of the biggest achievements. Yes. Jesus did not even reveal himself to his own mom first. Hmm. But to this woman, because the dedication was there. The dedication was big. It was bigger than her. So the little things we do for God, God recognizes. Exactly. Him. And he's going to honor you based yes. on what you do for him. Yes. <laughs> Let us heal you. Yes, I've learned a lot from just, you know, these past few days trying to read about her, you know, for our discussion. And um, I just wish I knew this a long time ago. Wow, wow. So somehow she was even the one who evangelized to the disciples First. because evangelism is talking about Jesus Christ who died and resurrected. Yes. So she coming to tell Peter and John and all those people that Jesus Christ has resurrected was the way that he was the one who, is, who even started evangelism. Yes. So a woman was the first person to evangelize. Yes, sir. So why are we saying? <laughs> <laughs> so why are we saying women should not preach? Ah. Uh, tell me from? about it. Why should women remember past this? Tell me about it. I think the next, that will be the next research <laughs> I'm going to do for you. I mean, okay. We should, we should research it. Why shouldn't women be pastors 
and elders and stuff like that. If Jesus himself took upon himself to do such a huge thing. Let me let me let me just show you one thing I saw in the Bible mm -hmm. somewhere. Okay. Uh, this, regarding what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. When you read 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verse, I mean 14 verse 34. Mm -hmm. It says let your women keep silence in churches. Okay. For it is not permitted unto them to speak. Okay. But they are commanded to be under obedience as also saith the law. I don't know um Is who it not wrote peculiar this? to Corinthians? Yes. I think the Corinthian women were causing some trouble. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. So yeah. if women were all like maybe Mary Magdalene, all women were like Mary Magdalene, mm -hmm. probably would be, you know, preaching or would be way ahead of the yeah. men. But probably there are some women that, you know, try to be disobedient and um make men feel less of mm -hmm, themselves. Mm -hmm. They portrayed certain characteristics that made it difficult for them to be put in, you know, in, line. exactly. Wow. So, um, the Bible talking about that fact does not only apply to the churches, it applies to our homes as well. You know, as a woman, just stay submissive. Don't lift your voice above the man of the house or, uh, you know, you are not permitted to just be disobedient. It is a caution. Mm -hmm. But I believe that shouldn't extend to the church to where women are not allowed to preach. If I am filled with the power of God and I have the ability to preach or touch somebody's life, I believe I should be given the chance to do so, you know, and not say, okay, women stand based on maybe what I've read or we've read you and say, okay, no, it is not permitted for you to speak according to what the Bible says. So therefore you need to be quiet and sit and watch the man, you know, the men do what they are asked to do. So it's controversial. Oh, you're going to research into it. Yes, okay. <laughs> it, it's it's yeah. dicey. It's dicey, I would say. Wow, 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 wow. I've learned a whole lot today. I mean, Me people, too. we've been talking about Mary Magdalene, one of the greatest women. I will, not, I will not even say women. One of the greatest human beings to ever live. He was, she was the one who evangelized to Peter, to John, to all these big people that we talk about. And um, fortunately or unfortunately, she was a woman. And probably that's why her name did not go far. Right. If, 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 she, if she was a man, if it would have been a different Oh, story. I'm very, very you sure. You can talk about the first person <laughs> that saw Jesus alive. We would have seen her. the name several I mean, times. I mean, this is wonderful. Today, you have really opened our eyes. And now uh, you'll be coming again as a subject matter expert to come and give us two more lights on other issues. We want to thank uh, Mr. Desmond Ai, a wonderful <laughs> man of God. For allowing this beautiful lady to be with us here, I know she'll be give, he'll be giving us more permission for her wife for his wife to join us from time to time. <laughs> Amen. So, Madam, God bless you so much. God Holy bless you too. We want to remind our viewers that our upcoming uh, night of gratitude, that is our fifth, is going to be a fantastic one. We have wonderful, wonderful ministers coming from all over. Minister C will be joining us all the way from Ghana. Of course, we have Minister Sally, Minister Gifty. We have wonderful, wonderful people. It's going to be November 24th at the Eastside Assembly of Church of Pentecost. People, my name is Adam Besma from Marie Sumwa. We have Mr. J. Pinto, the CEO, who has been controlling the machine for us. And so we meet again. Thank you. Thank you.